Hey guys, how's it going? Today we're gonna to be starting some seeds here in the greenhouse. I wanna talk about what things you can be starting right now and harvesting throughout the winter months. My main goal for the day is to focus on this green stock vertical garden specifically because it needs some attention. It still has like the stump of a broccoli plant, chives that need to be cut back. There's holes that need to be planted. So it's kind of perfect. We'll do a cleanup job on the things that are in here that I wanna keep. Uh, they're still great plants, they just need a little bit of help. And then we will be planting up the rest of the pockets that end up empty. The other two green stocks we have in here are full of strawberries, seascape strawberries, which are an ever-bearing type. This is the one right here that we filled up last spring. I intended on moving both of these out to give them the period of dormancy and clearly didn't happen, but you know, it's kind of fun to see what they'll do. I need to groom them up just a little bit, but you know, blooming, producing fruit, pretty amazing for December, end of December. And then this one right here, we filled up with the babies from this one. You know how strawberries form those big long runners? Well, we left them attached to the mother plants, but I drew them over here. In fact, you can still see one of the landscape staples and we tacked them down one baby per pocket and every single one of them rooted in and took. And some of them are blooming. Some of them have some small fruit forming but it's been a really fun project. Oh, that one looks rough. <laughs> Some of the things that you can be starting from seed right now so that you can start harvesting during the winter months before we have a chance to get outside are lettuce, spinach, kale, arugula, really any type of greens. You can do herbs like chives are really easy to do this with, parsley, mint, and then small root crops. Radishes are awesome because they usually have like a 25 day turnaround. You plant the seed and you're harvesting in 25 days and they don't take up an enormous amount of root space. And then carrots, if you intend to harvest them at kind of that baby stage. Basically some of those cold season crops that don't take a lot of fuss and they don't take a long time to mature. Let me show you what I've got right here. For greens, we've got the giant Nobel spinach. We've got the Asian baby leaf lettuce, uh, the Crispino. This is an iceberg lettuce. We've got new red fire lettuce, starfire lettuce, and butter crunch. Then we've got Danvers half long carrots, which we grew in this green, no, it was in that green stock last spring and they did great. We've also got cherry bell radish, French breakfast radish, and some parsley. I am gonna be starting a few of these things for different areas just so that I can show you how they turn out for me. I mean, last year I had lettuce growing in recycled four inch plant containers. They did great, but you can also use something like one of these setups. They're perfect for a windowsill and they're a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. Um, so if you're wanting to grow your thing somewhere more focal, like maybe on a kitchen windowsill, something like that, uh, these look a little bit better. This one I found the tray for. So that's a watertight tray below these little galvanized pots. This one I need to go pick up a new saucer. I can't find mine. One of the things you wanna look for when you're choosing your containers, no matter what it is that you're using, I mean, you can start them off in regular seed starting trays. I did that last year and then I bumped them up into four inch size containers, but you can skip that part. You can start right into some larger containers. You just wanna choose something that's like three to four inches deep is ideal if you're wanting to keep them in the same container the whole time. And if you're growing root crops, maybe something a little bit deeper. Small radishes, this would probably be fine, but carrots you'll wanna go, I don't know, the green stock is perfect. I think those are like seven or eight inch deep. I don't know. I would say if that was filled to the top, that's like, at least eight inches. One thing about all of the crops that I just showed you is that they're all cool season crops. They all germinate at a lower soil temperature. In fact, most of them, I don't think any of them like to germinate over 70 degrees. So if you've got, you know, a spot that's just a little bit cooler, that's away from hot and cold drafts, that's kind of perfect. And you can successively plant all of these. So plant a new crop or a new pot full of greens every two to three weeks, then you'll always have a fresh batch to harvest from. Before we plant up our smaller containers, I want to address this one and get this done first. Um, so let's just go one layer at a time. We'll spin it around and I'll show you what I have in here. So the broccoli, clearly I'm gonna pull that out. We'll give the chickens whatever we pull out of here. There is a little thyme, a dot well's thyme. It has tiny little new growth, but I just cut it back. So we'll leave that, we'll leave this strawberry. There's chives that we will cut back. Second layer, I have a tomato plant right here, which I also cut back. It's got a little green sprout. I might leave it to see what happens. We've got another strawberry, and then we've got empty holes, I think, in the rest of this. Oh, there's one more strawberry right here. 
down another layer we've got a strawberry with some fruit and some blooms we've got a gorgeous rosemary it's a trailing irene right no yeah irene trailing oh my goodness it is beautiful while we're here you can see the other two layers really don't have much i just need to clean stuff out there's a thyme plant i need to cut back right there swinging around here we've got another chive plant i need to cut back <laughs> oh my goodness this is gonna feel good to get this all cleaned up. A strawberry that needs some major attention and then a sage, a Burgarten sage that has grown massive. So I think I'm gonna cut that all the way back. Maybe we'll hang some of the sage to dry. I think to do this, I'm gonna take one layer off at a time. So I'll just take this layer, we'll go pop it on the table. We'll take care of everything that needs to be taken care of and then we'll stack everything back up on top of one another. Um, that way I can fill each layer with soil as I need to. I think it'll be a lot easier if they're apart than together, which means I'm gonna need more potting soil in here. Anyway, let's get the clean out done first and then we will plant our seeds in that. We've got four of them sitting there on the table and I left the last one sitting right here on the ground. No need to lift it. Grabbed my snips. So basically it's just going to be going through and I'm going to give the chives a cut back. Oh, it's so satisfying you guys. I'm going to give them a little bit of food today as well. I need to go grab that and they should sprout and grow right back. And these little pockets don't feel too taxed. Uh, root wise that was one thing I was going to check out I think I had a pansy planted in this one this one I can't remember what it was but again if I can dig my fingers in there and it's not like a huge knotted up root ball I'm just going to refresh the soil on top and then I'm going to add some garden tone as well for everything else that's in here <laughs> two tomatoes ew they're all squishy and then our thyme plant I'm going to do the same thing give it a really good haircut And then our strawberry here, just a little trim. I'm also making sure to grab any leaves that have fallen on the ground because even if you're not cleaning out a container fully, it's a good idea to get in there, get those spent leaves taken off, get any leaves that have fallen down, like just any debris that's on top of the soil cleaned up because that can harbor insects and disease like crazy. So cleaning out every once in a while is just a really good idea. Okay, so now a little garden tone. Mix that in. And then I think I'm gonna go in with the compost instead of the potting soil, just because I don't need a ton of it. And this will help recharge the soil as well. Okay, so now I'm just making sure that all of the little watering holes on each one of these water pans is free of debris. Then we put that back, making sure each water hole, so there's uh, six watering holes. I'm gonna make sure that each one of them aligns with a pocket. Okay, so first layer is done. I'm gonna wait till they're all cleaned out and prepped before I decide where all the seeds are gonna go. I think I'm just gonna bring them over one at a time, stack it, clean it out, do exactly what I just did until I reach the top and then we'll plant it.
That's looking much better. All cleaned out, everything has been recharged, compost, garden tone. And then I did do a top dress layer of just regular potting soil on top of all the pockets that I'm gonna be starting with seed. And I worked in the amendments down below so that the already tacked soil has been recharged, but then we've got stuff that's not too charged for our seedlings. And that clean out gave us 17 planting pockets, empty and ready to go. Uh, each one of these has 30 planting pockets total. So now I've got to write my tags. I'm just gonna reuse some of the ones I used earlier. <laughs> these were from Snapdragons apparently, and stock. We're gonna use the backside. I'll probably just do two pockets with radishes because I don't eat a tremendous amount of those. We'll only need a little bit of parsley, so maybe two pockets of that, a couple pockets of carrots, and we'll do mostly greens, heavy on the spinach. And really the only pocket I need to think about in terms of size requirements is this one right below our rosemary, which I trimmed up. I trimmed a lot off that plant today, and if I would have been thinking about it, I would have put this one at the bottom, but that's okay. I can keep this trimmed up and just do probably do radishes right here uh, because their greens are pretty short and it's such a short crop that I'll have those out of here by the time this even is thinking about regrowing some <laughs> dangling stems. I actually put those all the way to the side. That's what the seed looks like right there and I typically seed a little bit heavier in situations like this when I'm growing inside and you can thin out, you know, as they start to sprout and you can use them as microgreens. And then that way you leave enough room for the other ones to form up. Go about a quarter inch deep there. That's perfect. Now the way that this waters, you know, each one of those little blue trays, as you can kind of see underneath here, has the, the uh, little water hole and you fill up the reservoir up top. It goes through this hole right here and then it distributes itself on each level in each one of those watering pans and then waters at the root level of the plants that are in there. So for a little while, I'm gonna have to overhead water these pockets because it won't be quite enough water to reach in that top layer of soil to get my seeds, you know, keep them moist anyway. So there we go, first pocket done. 16 pockets to go. planted, watered in, soil has been recharged, and it's kind of scratching the itch for me. Right toward the end of the year, I'm just so anxious to get back in the garden already. You can see there's a tag for each of the newly planted pockets. I did three butter crunch, three or four spinach, three Danvers carrots, two of the radish, uh, two of the parsley, and then three of other types of lettuce. We have starfighter, new red fire and Asian baby leaf. I can't wait to come back out here in like two to three weeks time and show you guys what it looks like because I'm sure we'll have a nice stand of seedlings in here and it's just gonna be so much fun to have something fresh like that to look at. Now this container does not have like a humidity dome to put over the top of it clearly. It's just a very kind of awkward container for something like that. And I'm not gonna individually cover each one of these pockets um, like I will the other small containers that we're gonna do. I've got domes and or plastic wrap to put over the top of those because keeping humidity 
over the top of your seeds until they germinate is pretty important, really just for moisture levels, to make sure that they don't dry out. So that's something I have to be mindful with this since it's not covered. I'll have to make sure to come out here at least once a day just to make sure, I mean, the heater is close by. I have the vents pointed up. They're actually pointed straight forward. So I could tip those up a little bit so the heat goes up instead of coming straight down. Like these are never in the direct line of the air that's coming out of that heater, but it's still fairly warm. But I still don't anticipate them drying out super quick because it does get down to 50 in here. Um, these plants, these seeds should have no trouble germinating in that kind of temperature, but then it does swing up um, to like 70, 72, depends on if it's sunny out. Uh, we've had a lot of gray days in a row, so I don't think it's reached that high of a temperature, but it doesn't stay there for long if it does go up that high. Okay, now that that's done, we can fill up the rest of our containers. I think what I wanna do, I'm just using a base from one of my seed starting trays. I'm going to plant some iceberg, I think lettuce in these. I wanna do radishes in this one and spinach in these. The approach with these is pretty much the same, except I'm not using seed starting mix. I am using regular potting soil. I will still pre-moisten it like I do my seed starting mix when I'm starting brand new containers like this. It just helps for the initial water in. It makes it very easy to do without dislodging the seeds. I'm fairly certain I dislodged some of those seeds with the <laughs> power that was coming out of the end of that hose. I need to get some new uh, diffusers. Mine are so plugged with hard water that they're no longer kind of shooting out soft. They're kind of coming out hard in some spots. and. Anyway, did the best I could back there, but with these, pre-moisten the soil. Because I'm using regular potting soil, I will not have to water it quite as often. That's the thing about the seed starting mix. It does dry out a little bit quicker. It's a lighter blend, which is good for root development. It's helpful. And if you're planning on, you know, bumping it up and don't have a problem doing that, it's a great one to start with. But in this case, regular soil, which I have right here. I'm gonna need a little bit more than that, I think. So let's load up this tray and get it all pre-moistened. This one's already kind of wet. See how far I get with that. Perfect. Holds the form. There's no water coming out of it. Let's load up our container. So we'll start with the galvanized ones first. These actually came with little uh, rubber stoppers. See that one right there? Got to make sure to take those out. We want a well-draining container. I already took them out of these. Ouch. There we go. Make sure the soil is settled down in there. We pack it in, but not too hard. And I'm not filling these all the way to the top because spinach seeds want to be about half inch deep. So I'm making sure that my level is sort of lower so we can line our seeds up and then we'll put more soil over the top of them. Here's our spinach seed. So just sprinkle some on the top here. Again, I do like to seed heavy. Then we'll take a little bit more soil and just make sure they're about half inch deep. Spinach is done, minus the little humidity dome that we're gonna put on it once we get inside. I'm just gonna be using plastic wrap. So now let's do our radishes and lettuce.
And there you have it, all done, planted, watered in. This one has a dome because this dome fits specifically on this tray. And I do think I'm just gonna leave these out here. The Crispino Iceberg Lettuce, I'm growing for heads of lettuce rather than like baby leaf. Um, I did go ahead and plant two sites in each one of these containers because they are pelletized seed that I bought last year. And when you buy pelletized seed, they do recommend that you use it within the first year that you've bought it because when you pelletize a seed, it takes the the uh, shelf life of your seed down quite a lot. So I planted two to three seeds per planting site and I did two per container. So we should have some germinate. So these I'm going to leave out here to germinate, but they could go inside in a sunny spot. You know, Southern exposure is usually the best. And these are radishes I'm also gonna leave out here just for today. I'm gonna run down to the garden center and see if I can't find a saucer that fits it. And then we can put this inside on a windowsill. I think these are such beautiful planters though. I've got some that are a little bit bigger than this as well, but this is the perfect size windowsill. I don't have big giant deep windowsills, so this one fits perfectly and I have no idea what happened to the dang saucer. I haven't used this planter in a little while, so who knows? So anyway, I'm gonna leave it in here for now. Uh, it's cool enough in here. It shouldn't dry out super fast without a dome. And then our galvanized set right here, I am gonna take inside. We'll put some plastic wrap over the top of it just to keep the humidity levels up, but this'll go in a south window cell. I think this originally came from Gardener's Supply. I've had it for a number of years. I don't know if they still have it or something. They probably have something similar, but it's nice because this tray, you can either have it draining or you can have this little plug in there to keep it watertight, which is how I need to have it right now. And then you saw the little plugs that came from underneath too. Each one of these came with a plug. So you could either have them draining or non-draining if you wanted to use them as vases. I just love the versatility there but this is a really pretty one. The only other thing to be mindful of when growing these kinds of things inside is that if you are using a windowsill rather than a grow light or some strong source of light, you do need, do need to rotate your planters. So I could either go in every day and just do a quarter turn on these and that just promotes even growth because you know if our light source is coming from this side, the plants are gonna wanna grow toward that light source, but they'll stay even if you rotate or we can go in every couple days rotate the whole planter. That's kind of a little bit easier. But other than that, it's really simple. There's such a short crop that not a lot can go wrong uh, with them. They don't really need, I mean, the more light you can give them, the better, especially when they're just getting going. But they're not like your warm season crops that need a lot of heat and a ton of sunshine and really long days to be productive. These are things that just are easier to grow under less than ideal circumstances. So again, any kind of green you could pretty much think of, you could grow right now. Uh, any type of small root crops, small like baby varieties of root crops, and uh, those herbs I mentioned, chives, parsley, mint. I also have a pretty good time with basil, getting that to do well inside. That one does like a little bit more light than the others, but it does well for me. So anyway guys, that is it for today's project. I hope it was helpful or maybe kind of exciting to see some planting going on. It's something that you could absolutely do right now. I mean, grab some containers you have left over from last year and seeds you have left over and just see what you can get to go you know in your house right now and just kind of feed that urge to plant something to tend to something and then also to harvest thank you so much for watching and we will see you in the next one bye